Hello everyone, my name is Bottletop Hornet and welcome back to another episode of Vault Hunters. <laughs> I am ready. We have a decent supply of this built up now and I think it's time to start adding it to this. In this episode I kind of want to get the foundation of this done. Some of the little bits down here as well and it's all just going to be super basic <laughs> of this material and then we're going to detail it later on. And now that I have step, it's going to be super easy for me to get up and down. I think this is going to be pretty good. So, basically, <laughs> there's not much that I can show you about this process. I'm just going to be collecting materials. I'm going to be going around like this, adding the blocks as much as possible, putting them all around the outside. And, with a bit of luck, we should be able to keep up with the supply of materials that I need to build this whole thing. So it's probably going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, placing blocks, but hopefully it turns out really, really nicely. So I think what I'm going to do is just get this done. I'm going to uh, build up this whole area, give you guys a couple of in-progress shots as I do, and then from there, we can actually jump inside and start looking at how we want to, one, set up the central bit, Maybe we'll remove some of this stuff, or maybe I'll do that while I'm in the process of building it. And we'll set up an entrance, ready to start transferring our storage over here. I think I'm going to bring the drawers over, and, and really set up something pretty impressive in the middle. So, I'm going to get to placing 10 plus thousand blocks. I'm sure it's going to be a lot, actually. I'm very interested to see. I should be able to have a look right now at times used. Here we go. How about we do this? Let's get that up to exactly 2000. Wait, times used. Is that not changing? Oh, it is. 66, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's double check that that is collecting or counting properly 66 again hmm well <laughs> at the end of the day we have used about 2000 let's see how we go after i finish this enjoy the little montage and then we can get into the episode proper yeah Alright, that took a lot less time than I expected, and a lot less resources, so we've got plenty here left over for doing some extra stuff. Can't quite remember what we were at originally, something like 11,000, so not too bad. In fact, let's have a look. Yeah, we maybe used about 5,000, just a little bit over, but now we have a blocked in very, very basic, very basic. Oh, hello. Where is your master? Hi. Uh, no. <laughs> but we have this very basic structure that is not detailed in any way, shape or form, but it gives us an idea of the size and scale. So with a little bit more detailing and stuff added around there, that's gonna look really cool settled into there. I like it. So from here, we can work on getting into the main section. So, let's have a think about what we want to do. I think I want to come across and come in at this spot. So we'll go one past there. Something like this. Maybe one wider as well. Let's have a look, see. Yeah, not too bad. The idea being that I want to have a nice way to walk inside of here. And I'm actually going to start to lower the inside. I want there to be an almost mirroring effect, but not quite the same shape. I want there to be a dip into here, some 
walkways around the outside and whatnot, but the lower section being this kind of really cool looking dip in the ground filled with storage. I want to set up a really nice drawer setup that I think will be quite cool. So I think we're going to have to remove these pillars, clean it up on the inside. It'll still look cool from the outside, but once we come back inside, it's going to make it a lot neater, make us feel like we have a lot more room. And I can also do a lot more decorating that way. So we're going to do a little bit of editing magic. I'm going to stand myself right in the center here, line it up and <laughs> hey, there we go. So just like that, we have a lot more room, a much cleaner space, and plenty of area to expand into whatever we want to. So I actually ended up plugging up the entire hole that I dug out over here. I didn't just skimp it, it's not blank underneath, it is entirely filled in. So we did get to use a little bit, eh, if I can land there. What does that say, 17,000? I think I used about 3,000 all up including the stuff that I dug out of here. So now we have this space down here, which I want to make into four quadrants, I think. I want to have some different areas, different corners used for different bits and pieces. And then we have these extra layers going up where we can have farms, walkways into special areas, just general aesthetic things that are like for looks and all that jazz. So if we come up here, I've cut that off in line with the first one. So we have this nice open area up the top for walkways maybe gardens and things through here, archways to let us in and out to different areas. And this main section down here is going to be the uh, quote unquote base section. The bit that we travel to most of all, the place where we spend most of our time sorting out inventories, storing stuff away, doing crystals and all of that. So now we have that there. And underneath here, we can actually see that I have built out a couple of layers tried some different bits and pieces, but we've got ourselves a nice little spot. Let's just fill that in. There we go. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is probably at some point terraform down. We're going to make some nice cliff faces, greenery, match up with this kind of look a little bit using the rocky stone the grassy stone, whatever that is, and maybe some leaves and bits and pieces. I think that'll look really nice. And not necessarily just straight down from there, we may even have it come out to about this point here so that we can have some greenery, some trees growing up around the front, and also have this feel like it's buried into or even dug out of the landscape a little bit. I really like that. But we have so much space. I love this. Definitely worthwhile to cut out all of those pillars and get ourselves a bunch of room. It looks so much more impressive. And I'm super excited to build in here. So there's a few things that I want to do. First off, let's uh, try and land on those. <laughs> I am going to have to do something about moving this, but they are full of junk and I don't want to just break it and try and sort that out yet. So instead, what we're going to do is start to decorate down here. And I think I want to half slab a lot of this, even though eventually we'll probably get lucky and find ourselves a mega torch, which will help with the spawn proofing inside. But I think just the main floor areas done with half slabs will be a lot more convenient as far as worrying about uh, spawn proofing. I don't have to do all these torches everywhere since this is 1.16.5. We don't have that beautiful 1.18 lighting anymore. So I'll put that stone away like that. And there's something that I want to show you guys. Something that I would really, really love to have in vanilla. And all we have to do is come over to where we have a few pieces of iron and some sticks. And if I can remember, I think it's something like this. Maybe like this. There we go. A trowel. Now a trowel is something from Quark. And let me show you what it can do. Say we want to do a nice mixture of different materials. So for example, a combination of gabbro, stone, gravel, rocky stone, and andesite. As long as those are in my hotbar, when you use a trowel, right clicking will at random place down one of the blocks that you have. It's an automatic randomizer. So I can just do this. 
like so. And it will completely at random pick out a block from my hotbar. You can affect the amount that are put out by having more stacks of the same type. So if you say wanted a lot more rocky stone and a little bit of the normal stone and gabbro, you can see we got a good run there of the rocky stone. And we're going to use that to make a randomized floor pattern. Now I have to clean this up. Now, what I'm going to do is put this stuff away <laughs> because we don't necessarily need it just now. And I'm going to go grab a decent supply of our weathered limestone. And we're going to do something similar to this, but better. So just like that, we've gone through a lot of it. This is why it's fantastic to have this set up. I can just AFK here for like 10 minutes or so and allow it to build up a fair bit more. But we'll grab that, come over here, and do I have a stone cutter? I should, somewhere in here. Was it out there and I didn't notice? There it is. <laughs> we'll put that down just here, since we're gonna have to sleep. So what I wanna do is make up a stack of that and then turn it into half slabs. We're gonna do the same with this weathered variety or the mossy stuff. Ah, you can't turn that into half slabs. Interesting. What about these ones? You can. Okay, that's a little bit disappointing that we can't make it weathered, but since it is a floor, it does make sense that we would be walking around and it wouldn't be as green. What else can we do? This chiseled variety, does that go into it? It doesn't. What about this paved? It does. Interesting. That might be a little bit too textured, but we'll try it out either way. Polished, I would assume does, it does. And I'm going to hazard a guess that the cobble does as well, it does. We might also try this laid. Nope, okay, good to know. So we have a variety here. We have polished weathered limestone slab, cobblestone slab, bricks, the fancy weathered bricks, and also paved stuff. So we've got paved, fancy, weathered bricks and polished and cobblestone. I'm going to use that. I'm going to make up a bunch of these trowels and I'm essentially just going to cover this floor in it. So for example, we're going to leave some walkways in the middle, which we might do in a slightly more textured. I'm going to come out one like this and we can just do this. <laughs> I may go through and just change it up slightly because we will get areas like that that look a little bit too uniform. But in general, this should work really well. I just want to do this one corner and see how it looks with you guys, and then I'll finish the rest off if it's good. Because this is truly random, ah, <laughs> we can put unbreaking on those, so I might do that as well. But because it's truly random, there is definitely some points where it just picks the same one every single time. Now that's uh, probably a good thing. That looks pretty decent. There's stuff like that which I might vary up a little bit, but I don't mind that actually. All I have to do is make up a couple more of these. I probably won't even bother putting unbreaking on them. I can just make them their cheap as anything. And let me do this whole floor and see what it looks like. And then I'll be back. And uh, welcome back, folks. <laughs> I don't know what I've done here. But my dash stopped working, and now I am flying permanently. Uh. 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 <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Hey, look at this. But <laughs> we've got ourselves... Yeah, we're just going to go like this. We've got ourselves some randomized flooring. And I think, overall, it turned out really nicely. I'm still... Yeah, okay. Let's see if we can <laughs> glitch our way up here. I'm probably going to have to log out and log back in. But, yeah, there we go. So, starting to get some of that weathered limestone colour in here, which is nice. And I like the idea of these walkways here leading to special areas. Maybe more advanced storage for different things down the line. We have our main stuff in the middle here. But if we ever needed something far more interesting far more uh, bulk storage this is ridiculous I, I 
Hold on. Let me log out and log back in. Better. <laughs> but yes, if we needed something that required a lot more room, digging out an area down into the world itself is probably a better way to go about that. And we have plenty of space under there for, say, we unlock a big mod that requires a lot of space and we can't really do something pretty with it, if that makes sense. Something pretty like that may not be possible with it because it just needs to be a bunch of pipes and blocks and all sorts of different things spread around. In which case, going underground, <laughs> like sort of like what we have here, deep into the earth and digging out a huge area would maybe be a good way to go about that. We could even do stuff like power generating rooms or anything along those lines. So I think that's the plan. We'll be able to stick little walkways and little things going through all of these areas and use this central part as our main base, our main point of operations. With that being said, let's get into a little bit of what I want to do here. Directly opposite the uh, entryway, I want to be able to come in and see storage probably on those back to a ridiculous amount of storage. And there's something I want to do, inspired by a friend of mine, Liv. On a server we play on together, my other streaming world that I play Vault Hunters on, they have gone and gathered a bunch of information about all of the blocks required in the Vault Altar itself, and then gotten a drawer set up for every single one. I think I want to do that same thing. Because these areas are 15 by 15, if we say it came into the center, which is probably about here, I would assume. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. yes. In the center here, we can have our vault altar. And at a glance, we can see every single piece of stock that we have that goes into that. So all of the items, the discs, the nether stars, the blocks and everything of that sort is going to be able to go into there. And with a draw controller in this area, we're going to be able to instantly stack that stuff in very, very quickly. And then over on this side, I think I would like to make this my utility side. My stuff with the drawers that I already have existing over in my original base, with the vault items in there, stuff that I want to build out of, general drops and bits and pieces that aren't necessarily found on the vault altar itself, but I still want to use regularly. And then things like the vault gear that we're going to unlock all of the extra bits and pieces that we're going to want stored away, ready to see and visibly grab whenever we need to. So things like the repair cores and in fact, let's duck over here and have a quick look like so. I love how quick that is. But for example, we can get redstone stuff. We could put a spot for all the ores if we ever needed to. A lighting section, perhaps. Even things like modded blocks, we can get a bunch of them sorted out. I know it's going to be expensive, but I think it's going to be great. It's just, it's just going to be so nice to have a bunch of small ones like this, as well as the full-size ones. So I have 462 Laramar which is a pretty decent amount for the level that I'm at, sure. Uh, I am going to have to go put all of this stuff away because it is filling my inventory up. One moment. Okay, so if we go into our menu here and type drawers, or just drawer is enough, I want to make it all out of spruce. I think it's a lovely color. You can make custom ones that have all sorts of different materials on the inside, the outside. Stuff where you can change the face in there, the trim, and the overall color of the box. So that face, that stuff there, and then these in here. But for ease, I think we're just going to make a bunch of these drawers. Or the half and half, the two by two, and everything like that. We can also make these half versions if we wanted to save on some space. Or make it look a little bit interesting, having some stick in, some stick out. We'll see how I feel. But each and every one of those is going to require two. The spruce logs and stuff are easy to get. The chests are also easy to get. We can just farm that renewably. But the beniotite, not so much. So we need to work out how many we want to make. <sighs> okay, give me a second. All right. So after a quick message to my friend, 
It turns out it's 113. 113 different kinds of items can be found in the Vault Alter recipe. But if I think about it, some of it is not going to be as many. So for stuff like the blocks and even some of these things, stuff like bones and string and rotten flesh, sugar cane and bamboo, they can all be found in very large quantities. But stuff like the with the skeleton skulls, for example, or things like dragon heads, they're never going to be asked for in a super, super large quantity. They're the kind of ones that you need one or two or three, at least for now. In the future, it's probably going to be a lot higher, but we could get away with putting those into these quadruple drawers or even the half drawers. So I think what I'm going to do is make up... Hmm, it's, it's a hard one. I will work out how many I need to make up of the full variety, how many I want to make up of a half and a half variety, and how many I want to make up of the... Excuse you. Come here. Of the quadruple variety, or the two by two. But if it only requires two per, even for this stuff here and this stuff here, that means that at most I'm using about twice 113, which is only 226. That means I already have plenty left over for making up extra ones for stuff that I want to store as well off to the side. So things like ancient debris and the netherite scrap, as far as I know, they are never asked for in the recipes, but we do want to store them in bulk. Netherite as well, I don't think is asked for. And then we're going to want to store a bunch of things separately. Things like these vault relics and stuff we'll probably use netherite barrels for, but I want to make one for the meadow grass, for travertine, all the sort of blocks that we will be getting from these guys. In fact, I do need to remember to roll and see which one of my patrons gets that. But these kinds of blocks, if they're not used in the recipe for a vault altar or a vault rock, but it is stuff that we get from them, I'm going to make them their own chest. Hey, a little bit more weathered limestone. Nice. Even, for example, that weathered limestone. We want a good place to store it all. So I guess I'm making up like 120 of the normal and a bunch of other ones as well. And then we'll see if we can get them into position. Don't know if I quite have enough. I do have enough to make one more draw controller. And we could take this across and not finalize it, but at least start setting it up. And that means we're going to have stuff like poisonous potatoes, carrots, bamboo, normal potatoes, the seeds, the wheat, all of these things stored in their own separate container and easily, very easily, put back into storage and sorted with this draw controller. I'm excited. I think it's going to look really good and it's going to be a wonderful option for me as far as storage. I know that I could aim for stuff like the uh, the digital storage using RF toolbase or even going for refined storage, which we may still do eventually. But I like this as kind of a an in-between. Oh God. There we go. Made it daytime. But because a lot of people who are watching this may not have actually gotten into modded before, or don't have any experience with it, I feel like this is a really good example of what modded can do without it going too far away from vanilla. It's sort of still a chest. It's just a chest that can only hold one item at a time. But I think most people can wrap their head around the fact that all it does is it allows us to stack more than 64 in that single slot by dedicating the entire storage unit to it. So. Let me set that up and then we can go over and start working out our layout, how we want to set it up and how it's going to look with those drawers in position. Yeah. All right. So we've got ourselves plenty of spruce drawers and only a couple of the two by two. I don't want to get too far into it until I start to fill them. We can always take some away and replace them with half and halves like this, the one by two or even more two by two, and I'm sure we'll come up with plenty of uses for the extra spruce drawers down the line. At worst, we use them for upgrade templates as we will probably want to slowly upgrade our drawers to hold more and more as we go along. So we'll grab that drawer controller, have a quick bite to eat, and let's take it over to our new base and have a look at how we want to set them up. Oh, we don't want those anywhere near us. So from here we have comfortably about a three high area. If we wanted to lift that up 
so that it is a full block in height, like so, and then place the drawers on top. I feel like three high by the width of this area is probably a good way to go about it. Oops. <laughs> so let's grab that. And just for starters, we're going to see how this sort of sits. Keeping in mind that I also want it to be able to be hooked up to our draw controller unit, which may end up being somewhere around here. It's going to be difficult to make it look good. I may even waste the resources just to make more so that we can have them centralized. We'll see how I go. So from here, one, two, three, four, five. Let's come in off the corner a little bit so that we can have a single space on the edge of this as well. That's going to end up being blank space. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Doesn't quite work as an odd number. So maybe we do that. Six on either side would leave us with a centralized point which we could use a draw controller in. Something like that. Once again, six on either side with a central point for a draw controller. And that's a small fraction of what we need. <laughs> How many is that overall? Three by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirty-six, and thirty-six. So we're going to need a lot more than that in storage. Which means that rather than breaking into our area up here and making it difficult to work with, we're probably going to dig this section down a little bit to gain some more space. So give me a second, I think what I will do is make it so that that central piece there is a draw controller and we'll go two more layers down on either side. All right, let me do that. So I may have spent a little bit more time trying to organize this than just putting some drawers in. We now have a little bit more of a structured area. Because I had to lower this down and adjust it a heap to fit the amount of drawers that I needed, I decided to do the same thing with every single side and we can adjust these at a later point. I did a little bit of detailing but ended up just filling in the tops with plain weathered limestone just because I'm sure I'm going to change it and add things in there anyway. But for now, we have this whole setup with a nice crossroads here in the middle and uh, I kind of like it. It took a bit of time and working out but it does, does look pretty cool. And I think that with some of these bits here, I can actually make little alcoves into the wall to have uh, have some nice little functionality in those areas. But here we have our vault altar. Set up nice and visible, low enough that I can still see from here all of the stuff that I want to put in. And underneath here, we have oak trim. Now, for a drawer controller to work on these drawers, it needs to be connected to the drawer system. We can use oak trim and actually move it all the way over here and then you can see we've got that going through and touching those drawers. So that's how I've organized that. And now I think I'm going to grab some of the stuff that is required and we're going to start off with the main blocks like diorite, stone, although stone actually is not part of any of the recipes. It doesn't use plain stone. But things like dirt, we do, cobblestone, we do, oak logs, gravel, even jungle logs, and a couple of those things. There's like that, that. I'm going to have to go through a bit of sand and work out exactly what I need. A bit of andesite. And it is going to require a fair bit of setup, but let's just have a quick look. If we say grab the andesite from here, go like that. We'll grab some diorite and we'll probably pair them together in ways or I'll put them together in a way that makes sense to me. So I want to put all of my logs, for example, in a place where they're all together. So we'll do some gravel, some dirt, some sand, do some smooth stone because that is uh, something that pops up in the recipe. And let me go grab a bunch of the things that I have over here. So the reason that I've stored all of these is because they are things that we're going to use recipe wise. So for starters, let me just grab things that I know are going to be brought up. And I've got so much junk on me. <laughs> I'm not quite prepared for this move. Now, this is looking a little bit strange. Eventually, I think I want to turn this into a farming uh, room. I want to have my farmers to 
grab a bunch of food and everything like that in this area. Gives us a reason to come back to this spot. And uh, it also will fill in this area quite nicely. But for now, we've still got a fair bit of this stuff just sort of chilling. We'll grab some blackstone. I know that bricks are part of it as well. Packed ice is and normal ice. Terracotta. I think sandstone is too. So we'll grab that. Podzel. Nether bricks. Yeah. Oh, and I know dark prismarine is as well. And maybe normal prismarine. Okay. Let's take that back over. Hey. And uh, we'll see if we can get it set up in the system. All right. So. Things like this. We're going to put some granite in there. Some diorite up in here. Cobblestone. And it looks like sandstone is not part of the, uh, the vault recipes. So gonna grab terracotta i do need to get my obsidian ready and i'm gonna try and sort of keep them in a way that uh looks orderly but it's gonna be a little bit difficult prismarine bricks prismarine and dark prismarine are all on the altar recipe so that's good that we do have the ocean monument out there as well which is very nice We'll do some of that and some of that, that and that. There's just going to be this wall of blocks when we're done with it. Podzel is also one that can pop up. What else have we got? The two types of ice, the packed and the normal ice can show up, but not the blue ice. So I'm going to go like this and like this. And we have so much of that out there. And I'll probably put some of the other things in there as well. Now let's go get some of our wood types. A lot of this is just going to require me to go back and forth and start to sort it out a little bit. So that is something that I'll probably end up doing in between episodes. I will grab some spruce and some dark oak. I've already got jungle. That maple does not belong in there. And birch. We'll have to get some acacia. And what else is there? Probably also the nether stuff. I'm not sure whether they show up. While I'm here, I may as well grab some of this stuff as well, like the... Uh, Cactus, potatoes, poison potatoes, all of these things are going to be necessary in our area. Sunflowers, the rose bush, peonies. Do we have peonies? I know lilac is. All of the two tall flowers definitely show up in there. Cocoa beans, sugar cane, what else? With the roses. Oh boy, this is going to take a lot of time. There we go couple of our logs in there and let's let's check something we should see if it's connected by doing that hmm it's not quite why is that not one two three four five six interesting hmm we really should go get our number system and double check that why is the uh, the trim not working for me i think they might be yes in here so quantity key we will have a look at in fact, I should be able to do this. Why? Okay. Very interesting. Let's have a look. See, the oak trim should allow it to be connected. And as far as I can tell, it is all connected through there. Does it need to be spruce to be able to connect to the spruce drawers? Surely not. Let's just do a very quick test by grabbing some of the oak trim from up here. And I'm just going to connect it across like that. Let's put some of that there and see whether this works. It does. Hmm. Interesting. So what is going on here? Troubleshooting time. <laughs> ah, that will probably do it. Directly underneath the draw controller there, I'd just forgotten to connect that bin. So with a bit of luck, uh, I should be able to do this. Yes. Okay. Now we're working <laughs> a little bit of troubleshooting, but we're back. We're back working exactly how intended. So now we can see that we've got bits and pieces everywhere. It does become a little bit hard to see the number from down here, but I can just see it. If I have a quick look, not the worst. So now with stuff like this obsidian, we can see we have 36 there. I should be able to come over here. And now we have 198. Beautiful. Okay. Phew. <laughs>
So starting to get this stuff sorted out in there, getting the blocks all fixed up, and it's going to take some time. I don't necessarily have all of the items that I need. Some of the stuff I'm going to put over like that, and we're just going to have smaller supplies of them. So stuff like the poisonous potatoes, you really don't need that much. It's usually only a couple. It's like this stuff here. It pops up as the lower amount. So that's why I've made these half drawers to allow us to store in the same amount of space a decent amount without it going as small as the quarter drawers. All right. So we can do stuff like eh, grab some bones, grab some string, and actually start to clear this stuff out, which is so good. So, so good. Flint can go. Let's grab all of this dirt and get rid of that too. Gunpowder and spider eyes, all things that we're going to make farms for down the line. And we can just go like this, put spider eyes in there, string in here. I don't think arrows come up into the, uh, into the lineup, but that does. And then anything that's extra, we should be able to just clear it out like that. Oh, I love drawers. I love them so much. And eh, we'll put some of those away as well. Leather, leather can go down here. And as much as I'd love to uh, continue to do this for the rest of the episode, we're pretty much out of episode time. So I'll put away some of the oak. Things like glass can go in here. Oh man, once I get this whole thing set up and also the stuff on the other side, it's going to be one of the most convenient things I can think of. Just going up and anything that is in my inventory. I almost want that to be the case in the long run. Anything in my inventory, I just have to double click there or double click somewhere over here. I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you think I should do a storage system of this size to match it? Where did you come from? <laughs> to match this on that side. And we could have a section like there that has our vault loot, but have a bunch of extra drawers like this for all of the modded blocks that we want to use. Or do we try and streamline it a bit and change up the storage on this side? I definitely want to add some netherite barrels for our vault gear. Things like the, uh, the weapons that we get from the vault. Things like the armor and the totems. They're going to be important to separate and keep track of. But things like just even basic stone and sandstone. Vanilla blocks that aren't going to be used in the vault altar. We probably want some setup for that as well, because we'll be collecting a lot over time. I'd love to know what you guys think, and I'd love to know what you think of this setup here. But I'm going to spend a little bit of time organizing it, moving stuff across in between episodes, and hopefully be able to show you guys a mostly completed, with the stuff that I have available, uh, storage system for all of the vault altar recipes. So with that, I am going to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It feels a little bit like I didn't do much, but then I look and think, oh, actually I built the entire <laughs> pyramid and dug out thousands upon thousands of stone. Ooh, please. So really, at the end of the day, not too bad. I think this is going to be really cool. I think we're going to have plenty of good storage in here, a nice organized system. That already is incredibly organized, even without all of the blocks in there. And it's going to make it very easy to go, okay, what do we need? We need diorite. We need charcoal. We need leather. I can see the leather from here. I think that's going to be really cool. Just a couple of little spots where it's maybe not visible, but not the end of the world. So if you did enjoy, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like. It does really help get the videos out there and show that you're enjoying my content. And it shows me that you guys are enjoying my content as well. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. We're going to be doing plenty more Vault Hunters. It is really, really enjoyable to me right now. And I'm having an absolute blast. That arrow is really painful looking. And I hope you guys are looking forward to the progress of this area. How I decorate it and make it look like the inside of a Mayan inspired temple somebody in the comments i sorry i can't think of the name right now and i'd have to go look it up but somebody said it's very stone punk and i love that not quite steampunk not quite uh, futuristic but very stone punk and i think it's cool so until the next episode i hope you guys take care of yourself and i'll see you then all right everyone take care and bye bye uh 